What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Sophisticated Grizzly. In the house, we got Mass Creator, we got Van Gogh, we got Bass. The ladies will probably be coming in very soon, as you can see. This is the new studio, but guess what? Just because we got just a little bit fancy, don't mean these bears won't keep attacking because we're attacking your asses tonight. So be prepared. Here we go. You already know what time it is. everybody and welcome back to the sophisticated grizzly tonight we are talking about choice and consequence what do i mean by choices and consequence well i am a firm believer that everyone has the has the absolute right to make whatever choices that they want for their life it's your life you make the choice for it if you choose to uh be non-binary if you choose to decide that you want to date a specific kind of people, a specific color of people, it's absolutely fine. But what we're asking here tonight, the men on the panel, but we're going to uh, uh, get what, hear what they have to say as well. But I know for me, I'm going to say, when the consequences come, shut your black ass mouth. Because every choice has a reward or consequence. So when the reward comes, we don't hear nothing from y'all. But whenever the consequences come about, all you want to do is bitch, whine, and complain about the, the, the very thing that you already knew was going to happen. But, but JB, tell me, we were just having a conversation right before we got on here. And um, it was about the, uh, the young lady that Yana Van Zandt was talking to. Michelle um, K. I, Williams. Michelle, yeah, Michelle K. Williams. So, um, beautiful young lady. Um, I love her. I actually, I've watched some of her content. Um, you know, she's a, she, she's pretty good at what she does. And the statement that's been getting her under fire is when Ilyana asked her, would you date a bus driver? And she said, if he owns the bus. What do you think about that statement, brother? Even educated people make bad decisions on how they're going to address the situation. I think that the problem with what she said is that everybody does not come from the same station in life. So what may be mediocre to you may be an achievement for others. I mean, you've we've heard about people who went back to school when they were 85 years old to get their eight their high school equivalency or you've heard people who went back and got their bachelor's degree at 70 you know so yeah. your your idea of achievement is on somebody is it does not always match up with somebody else's idea of achievement so yeah. i mean yeah. so yeah he could own the bus but I mean, I, I'm not even going to steal your thunder. I'm going to let you say what you said before because I don't want to steal your thunder on that. But the whole idea is that you cannot always judge where a person is going by possessions. Right, right, exactly. I want to welcome Miss Marcy into the building. What's up, Marcy? I so much. I know What's it's been forever. On? Hey, Miss Marcy. Hi. I'm sorry, I had to put on my construction hat, everybody. I had to, I had to get in here. And I had to build this stuff. You know what I mean? I had to actually get in and put it all together. But, you know, hopefully it looks up to par. Hopefully it looks to the standard of the sophisticated person. It, it looks yeah. good, bro. Good. Yeah. Thank you, brother. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. I appreciate it. You know, I figured I now. Whole left side. Whole left, left side. side. One, yeah. well, 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 before the show is over, I'm going to show you the, uh, this side here, that side here, and then up, up, up below it. Because the show's almost full. Wow. Yeah. 
So they're almost full. So I and I'm I still have some more coming. So yeah, I, I I'm ridiculous with this. I'm just <laughs> say, I'm absolutely ridiculous. You have but, an but listen, It's a it's a horrible addiction. It's it's an addiction that is expensive, but it's not something that's going to make me run up in grandma's house and steal a TV. Okay. You know, it, you know, it's not going to give me cirrhosis of the liver or anything like yeah. that. Just, I might die smelling good, but that's about it. You know. Mm-hmm. But um, honestly, I, I, Mace, won't you tell me like with, with the with the young lady that said something about? I'm, I'm not sure if you start. As a matter of fact, let me play it. I'll play the video so that you guys can see it, and then give me your opinion. On it. Would you date a bus driver? You. Would you date if he owns the bus? If he owns no. it. If he owns the bus. See, that's, owns a problem. It. that's a problem. That's a problem. Okay. Because the standards and requisites, and I'm not talking about him laying on his sofa playing video games all day. <laughs> I'm not talking about mm-hmm. that. But the standards and the criteria that we use to measure men is off for who mm-hmm. we are as women and who they are in this society. I would date a bus driver mm-hmm. if he was if he loved driving the bus, if he was a man of integrity, mm-hmm. if he was good to his mama, if he treated me well, I would date a bus driver. But we think that it's another human being's responsibility to give us what we need instead of us building together. I can build with a bus driver. Mm-hmm. I'd have my little stash over on the side in my prenup, but I could build with a bus driver. Mm-hmm. Apparently, oh. apparently, she never saw a Tyler Perry movie. <laughs> <laughs> you know wow. what? Wow. Perfect in base, base that is a perfect lead in. Man, but please, what do you think, man? Like, do you, do you, do you agree with the, what the young lady said as far as him owning the bus? Or do you feel like, like Ilyana was saying, the standards that, that that you have for someone, you know, it might be a little bit far fetched because this the one percent is one percent for for a uh-huh. reason. Oh yeah, you know. But well, you, you know what? Tell me what you you, think, what? you you got a you got a lot of you got. Um, you, I'm not gonna say a lot, but you have a handful of women out there that have standards, but those are the ones that don't have a man. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. You know. I dated somebody that, you know, she wanted a man to do this, wanted a man to do that. She wanted me to jump through hoops for her. But when I asked, I said, well, what are you bringing to the table? Oh, I hate that question. Well, um, I think my man based in froze, man. The, 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 your internet is, is not liking the way that you're answering the question, but I'm not, I don't understand. I'm sorry, but, um, Good, brother. We, we couldn't hear the rest of what you said. What were you saying? Uh, yeah, you said I, don't, some, I, I don't know. I, I paid my boost payment. I don't know what the hell's going on. <laughs> but, but, uh, but, um, but the woman that I was um, engaged to a couple years ago, she wanted me to, she wanted, she had all these standards. She wanted me to jump through all these hoops. So I said, wait a minute. So if you got so many expectations that you want from me, I said, what are you offering? And what was the answer for that? He froze again. Oh man. Well, we, we, we're gonna we're gonna um, uh, go over to um, brother Van Gogh real quick so he, he can tell base uh, gets the boost payment made. Um, yeah. Brother, so, brother, um, so I I think that that happens um, a lot more than it should like these uh, I think we touched on it one time before where we got into like the realities of dating that nobody's going to ride in on that white horse and here we go off into the sunset you know um, you know real life is not a Disney movie per se but that seems to be you know what a lot of not all but a lot of women look for and are raised to um kind of seek out if you will yeah um even from you know like an early childhood or whatever right right girls uh immediately start playing with you know baby dolls they're getting ready for motherhood already when they're younger whereas you know 
guys, we're we're figuring things out. Yeah, yeah. Um, so her standpoint on saying, you know, I'm not going to date a bus driver unless he owns the bus. To me, that's almost like um, you're not even seeing what the guy is trying to accomplish. Because just because they own a bus or own the company doesn't necessarily mean they're a nice person. And then that goes back to that whole um, gold digging thing that we talked about on a com- on a different podcast. So right, right. Her, her, her whole statement is just that that's that's just that's probably why she's single and nobody even a bus driver or somebody that owns a bus company wouldn't even talk to her okay okay miss marcy what about you what do you think about what she had to say i happen to have been married to a man who owned a whole bus company no. He was not rich. He, he wasn't rich. Right. He wasn't rich. He didn't even yield Very nice. six figures. He didn't even yield six figures. Um, he 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 works for a bus company now. He well, he manages one now. He right. makes more money doing that. Plus, he has a fantastic benefits package, which includes mm-hmm. retirement. So. <laughs> I would date a person who drives a bus. Right, right. I would date a person who owns a bus company. What what a person does for a living does not determine if I'm going to date that person or not. Like Van Gogh said, if, if that person is a nice, kind, genuine person, that's what will get my interest. You right. Know? Um, and I wanted to go back to something Bay said where, where he asked... Um, you know, what do you bring it to the table? God damn it, I hate that question. I hate that question because I have been asked that question so many times, and you guys know that I'm kind of um, uh-huh. um modest and, and, and you know, right, 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 and, and what I do for a living. But but I find that most times the men who ask me that question are eating off a dinner tray and don't even have the table. So you know, they're asking me what I'm bringing to the table. Yeah, but but but. To put on that table, um, and I just I just don't think that's a fair question in dating. I don't even think that's a necessary question until you've reached a certain a certain uh, part in your dating relationship. I, I don't right. think my finances or his finances or any of my business right. until you reach a certain level. But I think what Brace was saying was she was that he was actually dating. They were together. Yeah, they were, 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 were engaged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, if you were engaged, you didn't know what she had on the table? Well, I want to know. I, no, 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 no. I want to know what she's going to bring. She's telling me what she wants from me. So if you're telling me what you want from me, I want to know what are you going to bring? What are you going to contribute? Is that That's not a fair question? If you're in a certain point of relationship, if you were engaged to this woman, you didn't already know what she had to offer at, at your table? She was too busy. She was too busy trying to figure out what I'm going to bring. I don't. I don't think it's unfair for a man or a woman to have mm-hmm. standards. I don't think it's uh, it's unfair to say. Right, right. You know, I don't want to date. I don't want to date anybody with young children. That's mm-hmm. just one of my my things. You know, gotcha. Um, yeah. I I don't think that's. I don't think it's unfair to have standards. Um, yeah. I feel like if you're engaged with somebody, you know, you know what they're bringing to that table. You know. Well, maybe. Well, you know what, Marcy? Maybe I didn't know. Was she lied to you, brother? It, it's not that. It's not that she lied. It's just that she had so many. She had so many requests of me. You know, if you're going to have a conversation with someone, you it, it's a shared conversation. But for me, I felt like I was interviewing for a job. Ah, because she's okay. She's not. She's not telling me what she's going to contribute. She's telling me, well, I'm the. What's she? How she put it? She is the prize, and I should jump through hoops to be worthy of the prize. And and much like you, Miss Marcy, how you hate that? How you hate the statement? What do you bring to the table? I cannot stand saying, I'm the prize. You ain't no goddamn prize. Yeah, yeah. That job interview would have ended right I then and there. Yeah. 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 
Yeah. And I, here's the thing. I feel like you ain't no damn prize or somebody that already opened your present. Mm -hmm. So come on with the bullshit. I, let, let's let, let's let's be real. Let's keep it a buck. Ain't nobody virgins on this goddamn show. Okay. Mm -hmm. And for the most part, the, one of the things that one of the, a lot of the things that men value are uh, well, one of the things that we value is is virtue. Another th another one of the things that we value is femininity. You know, and, 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 and a lot of the times when you come to the table and you have all of these demands and things of that nature and you're not bringing anything else except you just this, you're not trying to you're not trying to tell me how can you help me if I'm building this business? How can you help me make it better when I come home from 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 work? If you're a stay at home um, woman, what are you going to do to make my life easier and, 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 and more manageable when I get in? So. What are you going to do to recharge my battery so when I go back out here into the world, I can take care of us both? Or if, if we're both work, working, what can we do to come together? What are you telling me that you can contribute for us to come together to continue to build? And see, that's, a, that's where a lot of people are. That's where a lot of people are falling off. This is one of the reasons why I did the show tonight, because you people have certain choices that they want to make in life. Like you want to make a choice. Like the, she said, she didn't want to date a guy that was, you know, if he owned the bus. Okay, well, we don't know what the hell he did to get that bus that he owns, so he may not be a man of integrity. But you didn't, you didn't um, say any other criteria. So the problem is when people make these choices, and then it ends up being a bad choice. They want to blame everyone else for the bad choice that they made. They don't want to live in their consequences, and that's where the problem is. We don't care that you make the choice, but don't make us pay for the con. Don't make us part of the consequence. Don't make us be. We, we, we're not the major thing. What just happened? I think Bates oh, is changing to a different, different pro profile. Okay, I got that. All right, here we go. Hey, Are you back, my brother? Yeah, but I mean, and another thing is like we were saying because we were talking about it because she actually. Um, went back on on her show and she was talking about her choice, you know, and uh, and why she said what she said and she would never change what she said. I think right. she still missed the bus that it wasn't about the fact that she can have the choice to date who she wanted. It was right. the way in which she re she reacted and responded to what Ian LeVanzant said, which made yeah. it seem like she was demeaning anybody below a certain criteria yeah and that's why it, it did, i actually and you know i don't post much but i actually right. did a side by side of this because i couldn't right. believe that you know we are always said that you know black men are this black men are that you know you got to have this and that and you got to do this and that to be accepted and be wanted by women and right. it's like no other race really goes by that. They, they, a lot of, and, and it's a black women too who will accept a man and work with a man and grow with a man. My wife is a perfect example of that. We had, we had two sticks and a dream when we met each other. All we right, know right. is that we wanted to be together and whatever happened, happened and we would support each other. She puts on a pom-pom sometimes and I put on a pom-pom sometimes, but I never wore yeah. a skirt. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But the whole, but the whole idea, up, right? But, well, but the, you you have to be supportive of whoever you find is your mate, period. And right. maybe that bus driver will own the a bus company, or maybe he'll own a whole transportation division. Maybe he'll end up owning planes. Maybe he he could be a yeah. conglomerate. You don't know yeah. where he's gonna go from driving that bus. Maybe yeah. he's yeah. paying. Yeah. What if he's paying for? Doctorate school while he's driving that bus. Is that? Or maybe he's just happy driving the bus. Maybe that's yeah, that too. In his daily life. Yeah, right. Like probably, me, that should not yeah. be a problem. Yeah. yeah, like me and JB said earlier, you have no idea what that man had to go through to get to that point. You know what I'm saying? And here's the thing you have a right not to date him. That's right. perfectly fine. But once again, when you get to the person that you want to date, hopefully, Hopefully you get to the man of integrity. But let's understand this. When you find somebody that has already built their shit, that's where the whole statement, 
what do you bring to the table come? Because I didn't already built the table. I didn't mm -hmm. built it. You know what I mean? I built this table. I built the chairs. I built the damn glassware and all of the flatware that's at the damn table. What are you bringing? Because you were not there for the building process. So all you want to do is benefit off the off the, the finished product. So my thing about it is, is we all know that broke people will cheat on you. Broke people will yep. cheat on you. Do you think That's a true. man with a hell of a lot more standards, if you don't ask for a man of integrity, if all you're asking for is what he's bringing financially, that he has more options to do whatever he wants to do, the only thing that you ask for is that he owns the company. Okay, he owns it. But now he's going to act like he owns you. What if so, he's sleeping and, with and, every, other pass, every other passenger to get on the bus? Exactly. Because think about it. He's, he, 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 he's, he has access to people all day. You know, and not to mention he has, he has access to different kinds of finances. So he has the opportunity to meet different people. What are you bringing to him that's going to make so that he doesn't look in a whole different, another direction. What do you? What kind of thing are you bringing to his life? Even even in, on the, on another on in another turn, like Miss Marcy was saying, because there are women out here that have built their life. Brothers, what are you bringing to her life that says to, to that says to her, like it says to her or says to him, I am going to add. I'm not going to subtract because the only thing that we hear when somebody says, "I want a six figure man." And you're you're making um, about twenty eight thousand dollars a year. I see subtraction. I don't see addition. I see subtraction. I really don't see you adding anything. Or like they said, I know you hate him, Miss Marcy, but that person ain't bringing nothing to the table but another bill because you have shown up and became a bill. And what? But like you were also saying, you also have a choice whether to deal with that person or not. Right. You also have a choice whether to deal with that person or not. And then, like I said, this is where the choice and the consequence comes in. If you choose to deal with that type of woman that walks in the door speaking about how much you make, then you have to deal with the consequences of what happens if what you make goes lower. If you take a hit financially, if you've gotten her used to a certain kind of lifestyle where she had to do nothing, and then all of a sudden you're asking for help, she's not built for that. Mm -hmm. If you didn't ask for a person that's built for that type of life, if you don't ask for a woman who even understands the assignment and what you're trying to do in life, you're going to suffer. We've already talked about if you have to chase any damn body, you better stop running. Yeah. yeah. You better stop running because if you got to chase them, they're trying to get away. And if you're anybody's second choice, understand that if their first choice comes back, oh, you're getting cheated on. Oh yes. oh, yes. You made a choice. You chose. So we have to keep in mind that we care mm -hmm. what we ask for also because right. owning a bus or owning any company, and many of us know this here, takes a lot of your time yes, and effort right, right. and finances, mm -hmm. and you put a lot into it. So what does that leave left for a for relationship building? You know yeah. what I mean? Uh, so much. Right. Business. You know, I'm, I'm out at dinner and I'm getting calls and text messages and, and you know, it, 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 it consumes right. owning a business much of your life. So you have to be careful what you're asking for, too. Uh, uh, yeah. Owning a bus company will keep you out of that road. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. and owning oh. a bus, that means you have this elite. You know, you can own a double Dutch bus and, and not be making much money at all. So, yeah, well, I think it's more or less the the metaphor of, of owning the bus. She was, I think, she was more or less saying, "You have to be in possession of, like, you have to be a manager, a, a supervisor, a, a president, a CEO. You have to have an acumen in order to date her." Uh -huh. So I think that's what she yeah she's looking because and and this is the funniest thing because although there are so many jobs in media they don't make a lot of money no they don't only the top echelon like the Tom Brokaw's and the Brian uh, whatever his name only Brian those, and all yeah that. all of those top tier people yep. make all of the money and everybody right. else jumps from from neighborhood or from state to state trying to at least stay above the poverty line 
Yep. Yeah. I have a friend who was an a, a, a anchor person on a, a popular news channel, and they grossed about 75 a year they don't make yeah it if that yeah. some of them don't if they, they, have the hours they work, and they have to, the hours they work are again it, it's ridiculous it's much, yeah, yeah. Nope. And, and if you think about it the, the person that you know the people that you see out on the street interviewing people or doing the story they make less yeah yeah Yep. They make less. Yep. So you people thinking, oh, they're on TV. That don't mean a damn thing. Not the camera is thing. worth more than the person that's been doing the interview. So, so, me how, 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 so she may be in a different tax bracket and she because she's got a little notoriety and she's interviewing people on a certain level. So she may be above, yeah. you know, the normal budget of a normal. But she's budget. also a lawyer. Right. So, so she's got stacks. But... You know, yeah. I just hate it because if and we said this right before we went on, if a man started to decided we, if men on a whole started deciding that we were not going to date women who made less than us uh -huh. and only made up to what we were making, there would be a lot of women who would be out there they wouldn't even they would they would yeah. not have anybody looking at them they would have nobody checking for them it don't matter that you cute boo do you make sixty thousand yeah. dollars a year do you make yeah. forty thousand dollars a month are you on my yeah. level if we did yeah. some of the same things that women did to us when mm -hmm. they check for our when they check for our receipts it would be right. a, a really different world yeah because i mean you because believe it or not, the pretty woman syndrome actually happens. Right. There are so yep. many women who have been taken out of a a lower financial station to be yep. brought up to a higher financial station because the man fell in love with her. Not what she yep. could do, not how much money she brought. Because believe it or not, let's just call it a bean and keep it a buck. Most men who are about their shit, we don't give a shit about how much money you make. Right. We could mm -hmm. care less. It is because that's not our money. That's not yep. for us. I want to yep. know how are you going to be my peace while I while I am yours. I'm right. going to be your protector. You be my peace. You be my protector. I be your peace. We interchange in those roles whenever we are together. Yep. I don't want to know how much, how many times you can buy something. That's cool. Perfect. Got you. Don't give a fuck. Not doing shit for me. Don't care. I mean, because at the end of the day. If you can purchase any and everything in the world, but when I sit and I talk to you, I feel like I'm talking to one of my homeboys. You wasting my time, right? But you, you know, know what, Grizz? You, my, you know what? You know what, what Grizz? But to, to a certain degree, I, I blame I blame us men because some of us we want that eye candy, we want that woman on our arm that everybody's gonna lose their mind and their brains. Yes, yeah, but that don't mean they got to be younger than us. And they don't mean that they got to be, you know, they got to make less money than us. There are beautiful women who are on our level that we could date. And what that would do is that would adjust the dating pool. And then they would have to date men of their rank and of their level. And then they would understand what it's like for a man to struggle and make something of themselves to bring a woman along with them. And don't get me wrong, women are out here doing the same exact thing. They are coming from zero and making themselves heroes as well. So exactly. I'm not saying that, you know, you can't, you know, say, well, I'm not going to settle because nobody's asking you to settle. We don't want yeah. any, I'm not going to settle and I hope that no woman settles. But what I'm saying is make good choices and make sure that, yeah. you know, you're 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 not going to fall into a situation where your choice becomes your circumstance and not just your consequence. You know, do you do we know that, that men and women can change each other overnight? Like we can literally change each other. Like, let me let me put, put point this out here real quick. If every man on if every man and I'm talking about every man stop fucking thoughts, there wouldn't be no more thoughts. <laughs> Right. If every woman stopped fucking thugs, there'd be no more thugs. Right. Yep. Because yep. at the end of the day, now, at the end of the day, we all decide what's hot. So we have a a a a a um 
a woman of class and integrity on the screen like Miss Marcy. Yet you got guys coming to her who she's coming to the she's coming to the to to the to the table with all of with everything that you see in front of the humility, the beauty, the intelligence, the 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 um uh I mean the sense of humor, you have all of this coming to the table and you'd much rather spend money to go see some chick on OnlyFans that all she wants to do is wiggle and shake her ass all day. So, if women like Miss Marcy were getting these men and the women on Instagram were wasting their goddamn time, don't get me wrong, I don't like the couple of pictures on Instagram my goddamn self, so I'm not going to sit up here and shame people for doing that shit. But what I will say is, if we stopped it, if it didn't happen no more, if we was like, mm -mm, I don't want that shit. I want to see that woman that walked down the street that had on that beautiful dress and she looked like she's gliding. Yeah. Whereas yep. she's she's well within her well within her femininity and her beauty, and she has she has adjusted her crown ever so ever so beautifully. That's who we're after. If we start going after that woman, do you realize how many women would actually change to that? Mm -hmm. And right. if, if, yep. if women yep. went after guys that, that j we was buttoned up with the three-piece suits and just all with, with, with all of the smell good on and just never went after that guy that smelled like blunts and beer and shit like that, do you realize how overnight men would... I'm, okay, let's let, think about it like this. One day people was wearing baggy jeans. When did the skinny jeans come in? Overnight that shit just came became... Because... Because other people said that shit was attractive. Because you started getting guys my age. What's going on, my brother Rich? How you doing, man? We got yeah. men my age wearing skinny goddamn jeans. Now, I'm not shaming nobody for wearing skinny jeans. If you want to wear them chicks, I got, I got a couple power pairs. To you. I'm not going to, you know. I got a couple pairs that's a little too tight. <laughs> I got a couple pairs of skinny jeans. Yeah, I, skinny jeans. Ain't nothing wrong with it, but that's the thing. But think about what happened. Like one day we was wearing, we was wearing Timberlands. And baggy jeans, and all of a sudden, now people's not. wearing long ass sneakers with skinny ass jeans. The shit was looking crazy. I, I, I've never yeah, exactly. worn a pair of skinny yeah, jeans. We got Miss Brown. Wayne the started wearing them undersized 501 them. jeans to the point because Levi 501 uh -huh. jeans used to fit you like a regular pair of jeans, and then they started down yes, desizing them because little Wayne started wearing them too small. He was right. one of the first people to to make that skinny jeans transfer that everybody started doing with the underwear hanging out. And the whole idea is that right. then then the underwear people started making the band on men's underwear two and a half inches with their names emblazoned on them so that they would show their names above those skinny jeans. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So right. And then they was like, Oh yo, he got on designer underwear as well as designer pants. You know, whereas I don't yeah, want so that, because I'm gonna tell you right now, a clothing company. I've know never, ever, it, ever, 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 I've never, ever, 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 ever looked at a man <laughs> with his sagging pants and his underwear with underwear brand showing and be like, "Ooh, why? I need that in my life." Never, never. never but there are women that are attracted to that. There are, and here's the thing: once again, I don't want to shame them. I, I feel like you have the right to make whatever choices you want to make in a man, but don't bitch about the consequences. Right. Don't bitch about the consequences. You, I have, I have literally been around friends of mine that have said to me, I can't be attracted to nothing but a thug. I, I got to be with a thug. Okay. Every single one of the thugs that they dated, shit on them. Every single one. Now, I'm not saying that all men that have that thought process will shit on women, but you keep choosing a specific time. But then you want to complain about the fact that they, well, they, all these men ain't shit. No, all the men you look for ain't shit. Right. You've got to stop trying to bitch to other people about the consequences that you create for what you chose to do. Because I watched a video the other day, and once again, and I want to definitely put this out there, I am in no way, shape, or form trying to talk bad or talk against trans, the LGBT community, or anything like that. But I will, I'm, I'm speaking on what this brother spoke on factual, where one of the girls, she had a lot of hostility towards him because 
they had they had um, a couple of women and a trans a trans woman on there as well. So he said he he said, well, how um uh, the lady says, why are you even speaking on the trans community? And the whole the whole thing the whole thing the way that the whole thing went, the guy said, so when you uh, when you're trans, do you not choose to be trans? And the, the guy, the, well, let me say the person said, I don't choose to be the same way. He did. He said, did you not choose to take hormone pills? Did you not choose to put on a wig? Did you not choose to put on a dress? All of those are choices. You know what I mean? So the thing about it is we already know that when you make a certain kind of choice, it's fine to make your choice and understand the consequences that come with it. Look who just stepped in the room. Boom. Look who stepped in the, in the room. Man. Hey. Microphone. Yes. So. Yeah, we can't hear it. Stop tapping it. <laughs> I'm gonna fight you. I'm gonna fight you. <laughs> you every sound in here is nightmare. This is only Hello. Hello. Is this thing on? Can you hear me? <laughs> it was, it, you know, it, it takes me back to this cartoon. I don't know, I forget the name of it. It's something animations, and it's about a black guy. He does these little car daybreak animations, and he did this okay. one cartoon where the guys were in a bank getting robbed, and so the guy was like, does you know the robber was like, sit down, get down, lay down on your back, and we'll make sure you live if you don't take it and look at me. Just keep doing what you got to do. And the guy, another guy went, yo, yo, just make sure you do what he says. Make sure the robber, you do what the robber says. And the guy went, robber, who are you calling a robber? I don't identify as a robber. And the guy was like, well, you're robbing us right now. He's like, oh, you can't tell him who he is. He says he's not a robber. You can't. And people who oh, was Lord. like, and then the robber grabs his phone and says, you see this man right here? He's on the Twitter right now and he needs to be canceled because he's telling me who I am. He's like, no, you just <laughs> you're robbing us. So I told you, I called you what you were doing. He was like, I identify as a pilot. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Man, it, it, it got that's that rid- funny. It's that ridiculous where you can be, you can watch somebody doing something and 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 say exactly what they're doing, and they can get offended by it and try to cancel you for telling them or for sharing them with them what they're doing to you right then and there. Yeah. You're being judgmental. Yeah. I'm not being judgmental. I'm gonna get you canceled. Yeah, think about it. How many times have you been in a bar and you call them a bartender and they, I'm a mixologist. I ain't seen you spend one fucking record. Shut the hell up. <laughs> you shut the hell up. I ain't, I, I'm, not even, I'm not even going through all of that. Book. Just go get my damn drink. I ain't your, that that's book. consequences for going to the wrong bar. I want, I want the old white guy sitting there who just says beer or liquor. I don't exactly. need no mixture. That's all we got. <laughs> we got beer and liquor. You mix them together when they get to your table. <laughs> so, Sal, we are talking about the young lady, John Bowen and Rich. We're talking about the young lady that came on that had been interviewed by Yanga Van Zandt, and she said mm-hmm. something about uh, if he owns the bus. Right. Now, me personally, like I said, she has a, has a right to make that choice. Mm-hmm. But what do you feel about that? It, it's it's two sides to that. Okay. So somebody, so somebody made a point on the page when we put, we posted that right. the video early, um, a couple of days ago. Mm-hmm. The young lady made a statement of uh, asking a millionaire to to date a bus driver is kind of ludicrous. But somebody in a say under two hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollar salary wage that makes sense. I can't say I wouldn't. I, bus drivers make fairly decent wages, but. Right, right. Um, so I don't have an issue with a bus driver. Look, they have a job and they paying their bills, and I they don't have to rely on me to pay a bill. Go ahead, yeah. do your thing. Yeah. But to ask somebody that's a millionaire to drive a, that to, to date somebody that drives a bus, mm-hmm. mm, it, I oh. can see where that might be an issue. Well, I mean, men, the men do it a lot. Wow. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Women, yeah. Women, yeah. Women, pretty women. Yeah, I, I, I don't. I, yeah, I, I, and that's what we were talking about before you came in, shot. We were like, you know, if men started to 
barometer who they were going to date by what they make and don't go below a certain amount of money. If you don't make un over $70,000, I can't date you. There would be a big shift in how people would, women would address men. Because then they can, if, if all the men, if all the men are, are, are going to be like, I'm not going to date anybody under $70,000 and they stuck to it, then women will be forced to date men in their own tax bracket. So then they would have to make decisions that they wouldn't have to make if men didn't make the decision to date women right. below their tax bracket. It wouldn't bother me one bit because the thing is, I don't date people because of their money. That's right. you. So, so no, I'm just saying. So <clears throat> this would stop people from doing that. Yeah. This would put a limit. Right. You wanna you wanna judge me on my money? I'm gonna yeah. judge you on yours. Like I just said about so, the thugs are we and on thoughts. The same level? Yeah. Like I just yeah. said about thugs and thoughts. If you stop dating women that are thoughts and only date women that are that are quality women, then there will be no more thoughts. Because they would be. It would weed them out. It would, would think about it. If you can, the, the reason that thoughts even exist is because people pay attention. To them. They pay attention to the fuckery and the idiotic behavior. The only reason that thug niggas exist is because people pay attention to them and pay attention to the idiotic behavior. Mm -hmm. If women stop dating thugs and men stop dating thoughts, now look, the thugs and thoughts might date each other. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, that's what would happen. Probably. But here's the thing. Then here's the thing. Then we'll understand that that's that group of people. But the people of a higher standard. We'll stop going into those areas and try to make a what we call it a hoe into a housewife and stop trying to make a hobo into a husband. <laughs> but, but, see, but, but see, the whole idea is that then we get judged for being too picky. Ah. But aren't because, you supposed but, to because, but, but see, but the whole it's idea, is, it, it's different when you're a woman. A woman is supposed to be picky and a man is supposed to pick who he wants. Right. 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 And see, the, and the thing about it is, is, we talked about this earlier, like as far as um, if you have to chase anybody, stop running. Yeah. yeah. Stop running. Because if, if you're chasing them, they're running from you. And if they're running from you, if they should happen to stop, that means that they had no other options but you. And trust me when I tell you, your life is about to be a living hell because they're going, because you made them, you made them the top echelon, you made them your standard. You didn't have a standard of your own. That person has now become your standard. Then you're going to be spending the rest of your life proving to that person that you are worthy of whatever it is that they supposedly bring to the table. When in actuality, the only thing that they brought to the table was a pair of sneakers they kept running from you from. And they just eventually stopped because either they got too old, the guy or, guy or girl that, um, uh, that um, they wanted didn't want them no damn more. So... You still around? Huh? Why the fuck not? It's almost like that whole jagged edge syndrome. We ain't getting no younger girl. We might as well do this shit. That's it, you know. So that type of shit. Like, think about the choices that you make. Think about the choices. The, the choices that you places that you choose to put yourself in. The circumstances you choose to put yourself in. And once again, I'm not going to shame you for those choices. I'm not going to make you feel bad. I'm not going to tell you you're wrong for that choice. But what you will be wrong for is bitching about the consequence that comes from the choice that you made. Yeah, That's where a, I have a problem. But where as a friend, I will say something to you. If I see What's you up? going yeah. down that, if I see you going down that dumb, dumb path and I see oh, yeah. you making a bad choice as your friend and mm -hmm. you can, you can ask my friends and you know me as a friend, I will not yeah. Let you slip on a banana peel without me at least to letting you know, look, it's a banana peel in front of you. It's right there. Right. If you gonna make that step, you will step on that banana peel and it will sl you will slip. You don't need right. to step on a banana peel. You can walk around it. I'm just letting you know. Well, fuck it, I'm stepping on the banana peel. Well, I let you know. So once that now you have to deal with the consequences. But if anybody is your friend or loves you like they say they are, or are calling you their brother or calling you their sister, they are not going to let you make that choice without telling you there's gonna be a consequence. Yep. Yep. That's that and that yeah. the whole idea is a lot of people don't have those kind of people in their corner. They do now could you imagine if the, if if Sha was about to step on a banana peel and Marcy and Bronwyn didn't say anything and looked at each other. 
Wouldn't even seem like it's the right thing, would it? It seemed totally out of character. Because if I mean, they saw her about to step on a banana peel, they would both grab her ankle and say, don't step there. Yeah, now if you start, if you snatch away from them, just to step on the banana peel, you get whatever the hell. But they and, complain and, about the banana peel. Yeah. You step on the banana peel, but then complain about the banana peel doing what banana peels do. Right. Making you slip and break your goddamn leg. But you expect people to listen to that shit. You know, right. I, don't, hey, I tried to grab you from the banana peel. You decided I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want to do. I'm going to step on that goddamn banana peel. And it did what banana peels do. It's like walking into a damn scorpion's nest and not expecting to be stung. <laughs> if I grab you and say, don't go in there, there's a bunch of scorpions in there, I'm going to walk through there. I'm going to walk through by faith. God gave you intelligence not to walk into a scorpion's nest. And whenever so, people say stuff like that, it kills me because the first thing the Bible says before it says all oh, a lot of the other stuff is don't be a fool. Mm -hmm. It say Number don't one. be a fool before it say a lot of other stuff. But people miss that don't be a fool part. Yeah. Exactly. Ms. He, Ms. But you she know said what? in the building. What's going on, Miss? She said. But okay. Yeah, really. Good, brother. But you, you know what is, I guess it's one thing for women to be there for each other like that. But how many guys do that for other guys? I definitely do it. Me and Richard I, called I me in, I, in a, Richard called me in a hot potato minute and be like, Jerry, am I tripping? What's this? I, I, and, I do and it I'll all be the like, time. Yo. It, 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 it think about what you said before you said it. Yeah. You got three brothers right on the screen. That will snatch your ass away from a banana peel in two hot seconds. Yes. So you know brothers that will do it. The thing is, who you choose to be around. Matter of right. fact, so we've seen these fellas save you on this very podcast a few times from us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yes, man. we have. Oh, yeah. Now, we had to walk away from your ass one good time. Yeah, I remember that one time when all the cameras went dark. Yeah, sometimes yeah, brothers, got a lot of I thank you. I thank you. <laughs> yeah. But that's because we love you, man, and we're not going to let you. Love you too, man. Love you too. We're not going to intentionally let you slip on that banana peel. We gave yeah, we, you. <laughs> we blacked we out cameras, to, turned off mics. We was like, we had to pull the hoodies that? on. <laughs> <laughs> we pulled the hoodies down. Like, uh oh. <laughs> hey, 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 Marcy. That's, that's, that's why, that's why I'm drinking coffee now. Too, sometimes I'll be wanting to, bro. Sometimes I'll be wanting to. I'll be sitting there like, Oh, I know you do. I know you do. I know you do. He's going to fuck it up. <laughs> That's why we had I'm on, um, yeah. We had somebody on um, uh, Twitch that was trying to come through, but unfortunately, they said something disrespectful like, Let the snow bunny talk. You're not talking about any of my sisters on here. So I just got rid of Twitch. We are just now on YouTube and Twitter. So if you decide you want to be disrespectful, I will cut you on that too short to shit. Well, I so, don't know who you're talking yeah, about yeah. anyway, because we got sisters that can't be resisted on this show, so he just don't know what to say. right. Some people don't know what to say, boy. Wow. Yeah. Let's all go yeah, to yeah, his page and fuck him up. Talk no, about something. A banana you know what, bro? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You shove that banana peel right up. But anyway, we ain't going to go that far. But we got Mr. She said over in the comment section. We got what is this, BHF World over here in the comment section. We got a uh, realistic vibe over here as well. Uh, tell me what you guys think. Now, ladies, I want to play this video for the ladies. Fellas, we can chime in after the ladies uh, uh, make their uh, statement about it. But I want you guys to tell me what you think about what this woman had to say. Here we go. Where do we do that at? Only in our culture, we do this foolery. See, women from other cultures, they will get a blue-collar worker. They will build a dynasty with this blue-collar worker and love him and take care of him and be a good wife. Only in our culture, we think we're supposed to be dating millionaires, billionaires. Mommy, you don't qualify. Yeah, you heard me. You don't qualify. I don't care what kind of education you got. I don't care how much you balling in money. I don't care. Baby, you don't qualify. Because you don't know how to talk to no man. No billionaire, no millionaire going to take your foolery. You hear me? What you going to do is go sit down and get you a dog. Just go get you a dog. You don't need nothing else. Go get you a dog. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. 
<laughs> Damn, she was fine. She was beautiful. Well, I mean, she unfortunately, was. ladies, you didn't see the whole thing because uh, sometimes when I put the video up on screen, it'll play well for you guys, but sometimes it'll always come in over here. So, yeah. ladies, could you kind of, um, Miss um, Brown, can you tell me what you felt about what she had to say just now? Um, I agree with some of it. Okay. I do the part. I'm mean, to first. I'll start off with the part that I don't agree with. The qualifying part. Who are oh. you to determine what somebody sees in somebody else? So maybe right. that woman may not qualify in your eyes, but maybe in the person that's interested in her, and he may be a billionaire. Because it happens all the time. She he, she may qualify to him. So right. that part I don't necessarily agree with. Um, I do agree agree with that the, the theory that every man that you have to be with has to have millions and millions of dollars. My theory is this, and I've said it probably a thousand times yeah. before. I would rather have a blue collar worker that I know that treated me the way I wanted to be treated than a millionaire that took me for granted. And that doesn't mean that every millionaire is going to take that person for granted. But I'm just saying, you know what I mean? Like, I would rather have that. If I had to sacrifice money for treatment, I want the treatment every time. But if I can have both, okay, that's all well and good. I'll take both. But if, if, if I've got my choice of dating a millionaire or a blue collar worker that I know is love that loves me, he loves his job, he takes care of his house, he wants to take care of me with what he has, I'll take that over a millionaire any day. And that's what I, and that's one of the things that we were talking about earlier. Like when you mention these things when 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 anybody, I don't care if it's man or woman, when you lead with money in a relationship then the consequences that come might be completely something different because if you date a millionaire you have no idea how he got his million you don't know what and he then he'll lose it because the thing yeah. is he can wake up the next day and lose all his money and then what yeah. do you have in common and like i was saying as far as as far as men go we can want to date this woman like i don't i, I want to date this woman that's good that's, that's naive that don't know anything i'm, I'm going to raise her and teach her and this that and the third but understand this: you have raised her, you have you have uh, brought her into your life, understanding a certain standard. And if you cannot rise to that standard, remember, you brought her in, understanding that this is what her life was supposed to be like. You never got brought her in to understand that she was going to be what she may one day have to help you and understand and learn how to hold you down in those instances, mm -hmm. those instances where you may not be up. And so at that point, the only thing that held her there was the things that you taught her that she should be about. And mm -hmm. if you no longer have those things that she's going to be about, you can't get mad if she decides to go find somebody else that can bring forth that standard of living for her again, because this is what you trained her to be. This mm -hmm. is what you brought her to be. So you can't be mad at that woman for that thing. So this is the thing. You have to be able to live within the consequences of your choices. Stop try, Stop trying to bitch and complain about whatever consequence comes out of the choice that you made. But Rich, what do you think? Of what we, before you say anything, brother, I want to, Miss Marcy, what do you think about what the what the um, uh, young lady said? I don't know. I don't, I don't really agree with her. Like myself, I'm not looking for somebody to enrich me financially. Mm -hmm. I want somebody to enrich my life as a whole, you know, teach me new things, show me new things. Right. Um, I want to be able to, to discuss things, you know, and, and, and have something and talk, you know, in common to talk about, I, I, you, know, right. it, you know, yeah. I, yeah. That whole mm -hmm. Basing dating on the job that you work or your financial status is just, yeah. yeah. And I think that's where a lot of issues come in. Like, like, and this is one of the reasons why I made, why I, I, came up with tonight's subject because so many people base dating on what you do instead of who you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when you get what they do and don't understand who they are, why are you complaining about it? All you cared about was what they did. Why are you pissed off? Yeah. Yeah. Because 50 cent just said something recently that I thought was 
very profound. If you base your if, if you base your life and income on your looks, you're gonna do some whole shit. If you base your life, if, if if what your life is based on is the way you look, you're gonna do some whole shit. Mm-hmm. Because you gotta do whole shit to be able to receive from that from free financial gain from what you look like. Mm-hmm. Think about it. if that's all you have is your looks, you're gonna choose some whole shit to get what you need. And then what? To sustain. And then after those looks fade, you bring nothing else. Yeah. So, and then the consequences that you have to face is guess what? We all get older. Did you get wiser? You did. If you if you didn't get wiser, wiser, all you did was get older. You just gonna be an old fool that can't use their body no more to get anything from anybody. So guess what you gonna do? Some ho shit. Exactly. You yeah. need to put up that last comment. Damn. Put that last comment. Let me go and read that right there. You women you, would marry an average man, but many women nowadays won't. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. Well, yeah, the panel. Yes. yes. So true. Yeah. No cap. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no cap. I don't see these men on the panel as average men. I don't see a man who works hard at a normal job as an mm-hmm. average man. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. I am not, not average in any way. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, I, you understand what you're saying, Mrs. Mrs. Right. Smith? Yeah. yeah, yeah, but but because what I'm saying, what I'm what I'm getting from that is that it's the same thing we were talking about earlier, like when we were saying if men stop dating women of a lower tax bracket than themselves, whether it was mentality wise or whatever, if you just stop dating people that weren't on your financial level, it would shift the way people date and it would shift yeah. the way people act. Women do that now. It's yeah. called the, like they the women that have the checklist, the checklist women. Yeah. yeah. One of the biggest things is they gotta be able to take care of me. That that's usually but, the But but this is the thing. Being having somebody that will be able to take care of you doesn't mean that you have to be a millionaire. No, but what I'm saying is their checklist starts with money and not it's that they miss the, but they miss a lot of the other things that make 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 a relationship work. Yeah, my, but, how, wife, but how many women ask for stability and it can be misconstrued as I need a rich man? No, because they're usually point blank. They usually say, I need a guy who makes this much amount of money, who can, you know, give me my red bottoms, who can take care. Y'all are not like that. So, And y'all are not in a circle of women like that. But I listen to these models that are coming to the studio. I listen to these girls that come to these events that I, that are being thrown. And there are a lot of really messed up ideas of what stability right. and relationships are are oh that God. you don't see in your circles but it's mm-hmm. out there and a lot of right. younger people have this like the red bottoms expensive purses flying them out all of the things mm-hmm. that y'all y'all would say are nice but i don't i can deal without that if you're taking care of me, my, me sp- spiritually <laughs> well i know it's, I, I don't speak like that so i say <laughs> So that's how they said it. They flew out. Got flew yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, and that's where the corona came from. <laughs> the flu. No. Yeah. Yeah, and that's yeah. what Mrs. She said said, put it there it is. You know, society says money and you young you ladies on the panel are talking on character and that's the difference. It's so different out there. Like if y'all if y'all if y'all are on a journey to find a man now, y'all will find a man of good character and you will find a man that meets your criteria. But these other women that are out there looking for men, if you if they not finding shit. Yeah. But see they're gonna get used. They're gonna get used. That's the thing. They're gonna find shit. The problem is when the they gonna find bullshit. When when the quality people Let's just call it what it is. There are quality people or there are not quality people out here. When quality people try to fix non-quality people, they usually turn them into bitter-ass people. Right. You get what I'm saying? So that's the thing. Like JB was saying, if you date to the standard of not just your financial well-being, but if you date to the standard of your of, of who you are as a person, then there's a lot of people you wouldn't even speak to on the way to where you're trying to go. There's a lot of people that wouldn't even be... Mm-hmm. In your circle, on the way you're trying to go, because they don't fit you. They don't. They, they don't even belong. I'm not even. I'm not gonna say not breathing the same air as you, but we understand that certain people breathe rarefied air. 
because of the fact that the matter is you thinking on a whole different level and some people ain't supposed to breathe that air with you because they're too busy breathing domestic air because they that's what that's all they want that's the only place that they want to be they want to breathe the domestic air that's where they're comfortable but a lot of us on the panel we we honestly we're trying to look for the next level the next plateau and the problem is when you have people that think like that you can't allow people that don't think like that around you you can right. love them but you got to push into you got to give them the stiff arm because they don't belong in your space because the only thing that they can do is remind you of the shit that you don't want to be no more and you don't need that yeah. reminder <laughs> so you're going to a whole different level you go to a whole different space mm -hmm. Chacha, mm -hmm. what are you going to say I want to talk about this video I saw the other day where these two young ladies were being interviewed. I actually posted it on the um, Grizzly um, Facebook page. Mm -hmm. So the young ladies were being interviewed. And so the question was, how much money do you need, average money do you need for a wedding ring, for an engagement ring? And one young lady said, I think $500,000. And the other young lady was like, no. Between twenty, no, no, she said first she said twenty to forty thousand dollars, and she was like, no, anywhere from ten to, I think she said ten to fifty thousand dollars. She was like, I don't know, I don't know. But the guy was, guy was like, so, um, why would you need so much? She was like, well, if it's, it was something like if it's not starting off at that amount, then there's no point in getting married. It was something I can't remember the whole conversation. Right, right. But somehow the young ladies got it in their head that they're gonna they don't have no jobs or whatever but they're gonna find us this millionaire just walking around i don't know why they have this it's that fairy tale thought it's process definitely a fairy tale it's cause. the fairy tale thought process you know what like what 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 amount five hundred thousand dollars is is a ring because they're seeing these, they're <laughs> seeing these <laughs> entertainers <laughs> give these rings to people that they're dating and mm -hmm. they think that that's what they deserve and what they yeah. subscribe to yeah. subscri subscribe uh, subscribe to and that's not yeah. how it is it's the difference between when you have the feeling when you walk in target as the feeling if if you walk into bergdorf goodman's in new york there's a definite difference in the way you walk into those stores in the way you uh -huh. feel. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem. They don't understand that they are target women trying to shop yeah. at Bergdorf Goodman's. So you well, telling yeah. me, yeah. you telling me the little 50 cent rings that came in the balls at the uh, market don't count no more? <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> yeah. Hell no. no. Hey, 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 Not one bitch. Speaking from a brother that's been married a couple times, uh, anybody will know that a wedding is for the bride, not the groom. Always. So when you're spending all this money for a that's wedding, very true. it ain't about the man. It ain't about the man. Tell it's him, about the woman. Tell me where to show up and I'll say I do. It ain't nothing yeah, but I, a damn I, I, fashion I, I, show. I, I, that's I, all it is. That's not true. Sure. Not for everybody. I that's not true. Cases, I, 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 I could not wait, wait to... to I could not wait to marry my wife. I couldn't wait to marry my wife, but I could have wait. I could have done without all the pomp and circumstance yeah. and fanfare. And how many? Actually, how many? Was like, I honestly, I, I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I told, I, 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 I told my ex-wife, I'm cool with the wedding. I just want to be able to spread cheese on the cracker when this shit is over. Because of the money that we're spending, can we pay the goddamn bill afterwards? Can exactly. We afterwards? exactly. Can we pay rent afterwards? Yeah, are we going to have yeah. food in the fridge or are we going to be eating wedding cake mm -hmm. for the next month? I mean, I need mean, to see that. Yeah. That's really important to me. You know, how, many, so, how, many, how many weddings have you been to where everybody wanted to know what the groom looked like? Not one, not a goddamn one. It was about the it was about they the fuck what I look like. They give a fuck what I look like. They did, that, they did not care. That's why they sent my ass out first. I wore ass place. out jeans and nobody noticed. <laughs> hey, hey, Chris. Hey, 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 Chris. The only, the only, the only obligation the groom got to have is to make sure your ass is there on time. That's it. Be there on time because Don't if you come there late, late, she's going to have anxiety and she's going to lose her. She's going to be mad. Have, she's going to be mad. Wait a minute. How is that? The bride is always late. They not waiting for you at the church. Well, you know what? You, you know what, JB? You know what, JB? You know what, JB? Pussy yeah. rules. The what? The bride can be late. A man, uh, a husband, not gonna tell a wife. You are late. You ain't getting no dick tonight. 
it makes, let me say let me say this it, 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 <laughs> and i'm saying this with love brother because i've been married twice too do you think that be, because we may have at one point had that mentality why the marriage didn't work like like when martin took his took his butt to the nva tommy said what what mistake did we make coming here today i made the mistake of bringing my ass here <laughs> So I don't fucked up marrying her. Bro. I fucked up marrying her trifling ass. Don't start the Martin references out here. <laughs> oh, I won't get the most of them. You are so good. Oh my god. <laughs> but you know what? But you know what? The, the love of the love of pussy will make you do some shit, boy. Yeah, but you know what? Believe it or not, the love of like the wrong what? person. I'm gonna be honest with Puss, you. Babe. Pussy has started That's wars, bro. I'm gonna be honest with you. It's never the pussy that the man fall in love with. It's the connection. Yeah. Say, okay, let's, let's be real. Let's be real. You have fuck women that you ain't fell in love with. True. But the ones you my fell first in wife, love with, you had a connection with. Well, my first wife, I was young. I, I married the vagina. Well, we was young. We well, how was that her young. fault? That's your fault. It was. That was that was that was my that was that was my first experience at seventeen. Once I got over this was shock, I said I wanna do this shit again. <laughs> but that's what I so said, I but think up, about it like as you get as you get older and you start to get get within your get within your uh, uh, your maturity of understanding your feel your, your your feelings and things of that nature. You you fuck girls before you got to your wife. Yeah. Because you've been married twice. So you fucked women in between that time. You ain't falling in love with all of them. Oh, no, no, no. That's what I'm saying. No. So it's not the pussy that you fall in love with. It's the experience of that first one. No, I just, fell in love. I just fell in love with the first one. Yeah, the first one, I wasn't in love. You just fell into pussy. That's what you did. Ah. So <laughs> I, gave, I, gave her, I gave her my best three minutes, bro. <laughs> I don't know if I even. Hey, what, I, I um, did a. Hey, look. It hey, look. Like you, might well say, you, you might as well say I did a drive by because that shit was over before it started. I was like, God damn. <laughs> I was eight or nine <laughs> women in before I knew what I even thought love felt like. I mean, yeah, I, was, the, yeah. I was. I was practicing. I, just, I was yeah. practicing good sexual techniques. I wasn't worried about love. I'm Man, look, I, I'm the, the first girl I fell, the first girl that I had sex with, I didn't mm-hmm. fall in love with her, but I damn sure was lustful. Yeah, I, I kept coming like back mother, for more. But I wasn't like, yeah, but yeah I wasn't you came like back for more. Honing over her, you know what I mean? Yeah, the, 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 yeah. the thing about it is, is, I had to. Once you get you get into that maturity of understanding your 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 your, your emotional maturity and things of that nature. Oh yeah, you start yeah. realizing yeah. that yes, women can as well. Men oh, and yeah. women can't have sex with people without falling in love with. But yeah. the one person yeah. that is that connector to you, that's who you fall in love with. You fall yeah. in love with the person yeah. that you have a connection with, not that uh-huh. you connect it with. You know what I mean? So true. Because, and, and that's and that's where a lot of people because honestly, we when we say we fall in love with the person. Now, what I will say is this, it's funny, but it also just it also of uh, uh, zeroes that woman down to that one piece. Because when we zero yeah. her down to that one piece. That means the rest of her ass don't matter. Mm-hmm. Once, you, once, you, once you come up yeah. for air, once you come up for air, and you realize, oh, I fucking can't stand this bitch. Right. So that's what now you got. Now you got a whole problem. But once again, you cannot complain about it because your choice right. was to fall in love with that puss. And then when yep, you came yeah. up and realized she's trash, yeah, she snored with her. I'm trash for letting her. I'm trash for eating. So what? If she's trash and you ate the trash, what makes you? What that makes you? Trash. So true. So true. So true. So true. But you know what? You know what? You know what, Chris? You know what, Chris? To 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 to, 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 um, to, to go into what you just said. Um, the, the the problem with it, the problem with us men, we we are visual. Yes. We, we look at that. We look at that fist. That um that outside beauty, but that inside beauty is just as important as that outside beauty. Because you can yeah. look like a dime on the outside, but you can be a wooden nickel on the inside. I don't have <laughs> nickel, nickels in my time. <laughs> God damn. That's why you got a love base on the show. Man. A wooden nickel. Base. Wow. I swear to God. I mean, I'm just very like, oh, 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 Experience oh. is a motherfucker. Exactly. Exactly. I, I, honestly, I fell in love hey, with the hey, girl I had sex with. 
What? Huh? I'm still in love with the first girl I had sex with. Are you still in love with her? No, nah, she passed away. Rest in peace to Mrs. Hawkins. Oh, I'm sorry, bro. Peace, bro. Sorry about that. Rest in what peace, bro. What about now? How what the about fuck old was she? Hey, man, that's not none of y'all. No, baby. you. No, wait a minute. You, <laughs> you start this shit. Did, did, you, start no, did you know? Did you? Did you hear? Oh did you hear? Oh he said, God. "Rest in peace to Mrs." So that <laughs> means it was somebody oh, older. I didn't even catch that shit. What grade were you in? What teacher was you? Who, who molested you? And that's what the fuck happened. <laughs> that's what the fuck happened. You got molested in your ass or something. I like sell a cool <laughs> thing. <laughs> <laughs> I smell a cool girl. Would you say it's only abuse if you report it? No, she wanted me to cut her grass. She did. You mowed her. Cut the grass on her ass. ass. Yeah, yeah cut the grass or cut that ass. Yeah. yeah. You cut the grass when you cut that grass. That's what you did. Uh huh. Look, understand uh, this. If you if, understand this. If you are seventeen years old and she's using being gay, she's not too old. <laughs> if she if, if she just drank Metamucil before she got to fucking you, she's a little too old. Just a little bit, you know. If she checked the account, the social security card account before she got on top of you, she too yeah, old. That's probably the way she, I am. Is she not here with us? Did she have like a heart attack? Are you the reason she probably did. Oh, no, 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 no. Cancer took out. Oh, okay. Are you a cancer? No, I'm a toast. You said, are you a cancer? If you you ever hear a woman say, wrench around and wrench it off, she's too old for you. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. Hey, 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 Rich. If if you hit it and you smell Bengay, she's too old, bro. I knew what it was when I walked in the house and she had the fabuloso cooking. Oh, shit. (laughs) Is Is that what they call it now, bro? (laughs) <laughs> she, no, that means she had a pot of Fabuloso on the stove for her air freshener. That's she offered to make you okra and tomatoes. That's some flag, fellas. <laughs> okra and tomatoes. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Hey, mm. y'all, y'all mm. laughing at my trauma, man. <laughs> Are you no, okay, man? No. Hey, 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 JB. Yeah. He, he just got away with murder. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Rich, how did, how did it happen on top of you? <laughs> no, but honestly, like, I... she gave you a velveteen rub, didn't she? She mm. took a teeth out on you. She was an amazing Ooh. teacher. I'm about, I'm about, I'm about, I'm about to show you something wonderful, y'all. Uh, <laughs> hey, what was that? Uh, what was that the, the, with the clumps when she took her teeth out? Uh huh. Uh-huh. Oh, he said, "No, no, 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 no don't stop, you, stop. You, you asked for this abuse. You asked for this abuse. You know you did. You really did, bro. You really did." <laughs> I love her. I can take a note. <laughs> where, oh where her knee hey, hey, up but underneath her knee? Hey, uh, hey, Grizz. He said, I Grace. miss Miss Parker. <laughs> hey, Miss Parker. <laughs> what, you, what you say, Smokey? I probably be a whole uh, different man. So basically, what it is is the, the consequence. The consequence of um, uh, of what happened with you was uh, rigor mortis, bro. Oh, you, you killed that poor lady. Oh, did you, did you take that poor lady out of here, brother? Was that? A, did you yeah. do that shit? Are they looking for your ass? Is there a warrant out for you? Uh-huh. He mowed. He mowed more, more than her lawn. lawn. My consequence uh-huh. was, yeah. was beautiful because now he mowed more than her lawn. Now that I'm so, older, I find more mature women. Sexy, so. so your ass was trained for that. That's <laughs> what it was. So what when happened? you were trained, you wasn't. It made you finally the fact that you'd be hey, trained hey. for that. Us, yeah. young, <laughs> us young folks call it manifestation. Yeah, us old folks call that shit molestation. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we and we call it trying to get that pension. <laughs> <laughs> 
So how'd it go with Miss Dominique? How'd it go with Miss Dominique? Look, how'd it go with Miss Dominique LaRue? I killed her. Oh, you murdered that pussy. No, mm. I killed her. <laughs> she 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 came and went at the same time. JB. Yeah. I, 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 I need her. you, brother. I need you. I need you because I, I need a movie moment for Mr. Bass and Mr. Rich as Sorry. far as Bass with the falling in love with the Poom Poom and Mr. Rich for actually committing murder. <laughs> In a world where two men go on an adventure of lust and beauty, one goes for booty and one goes for age, base and rich. In a movie starring Chaka Khan, I ain't mad at you, and Angela Bassett. In I ate the ass and I killed the ass, a film by John Singleton, written by Ice Cube. <laughs> Produced by Adam Fuqua. <laughs> I knew that was coming. I knew that was coming. <laughs> John Singleton wrote that shit. That shit was called Sandbox. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Hey, Grizz. Yeah, 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 yeah. Man, that first, that my first marriage, I was eighteen. When, when the, when the pastor said, "Do you, do you promise?" To take this pussy and hold her in matrimony, I looked down at her crotch. I said, "I do." Base, your pastor you know, the pastor did not say that. What did my mind do? I'm going to say, and I'm going to say, well, you, your pastor is in hell with the rest of the uh, heathen. But uh, <laughs> Re Reverend, 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 Duke, Reverend Do, write us down there, bro. Oh no, yeah, he does. <laughs> it's not like he had Bishop Don Juan. <laughs> 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 but I honestly, like, I think a lot of a lot of the problems that we have, as far and especially in this society that we're in, is everybody wants to be able to make whatever choice that they want to make, do whatever it is that they want to do. But the moment that the consequences come, they don't want to have any kind of accountability for what happened. You know what I mean? Like it's almost like uh, not to get too deep into the conversation, but with with, with um, a lot of Republicans right now trying to change. Uh, how we see um, slavery in the country, <laughs> how they're trying to change it from slavery to indentured servants and things of that nature, and all, you know, trying mm -hmm. to change the narrative and things of that, you know. So, and, and then you got this other uh, politician up there. Now, I'm I have to really get deeper into what he's saying. I can't remember his name, but um, uh, he was talking about black people don't deserve reparations because you're not the black people that went through it and with your ancestors and this that and the third and i'm thinking like um well first of all uh sir cool a lot nobody really asked you to get up there and and, and, and try to speak for us you know you're, but, you're, but you you're, know you're sitting up there, you know trying to trying to talk for us black people talk for yourself if you don't want it don't take it but don't try but, to but, talk for the rest of us What's up, brother? But you know what? But you know what, brother? I, I'm, I'm the one that posted that. I, I listened to yeah. what that uh, lieutenant governor said, and 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 yeah. to a certain degree, he made a lot of sense because our ancestors paid the ultimate price for things yeah. that some must take for granted now. They, so that's true. But I'm th but think about this, bro. They paid the price for some of the shit that we take for granted, but we still paying prices. We're still, like price. price. We're still paying the price. We're still paying the price of slavery. And and then check this out. They they give they gave Jewish people reparations, and the, the things that happened to them did not even happen on American soil. It happened in Germany, and they gave Jewish people reparations from America. And Americans didn't even do shit to to Jewish people. Right. And all of those people, all of those people that went through all that stuff are almost all gone now. Yeah. And they're still getting reparations from Generational it. Exactly. Well, let's not exactly. forget about the fact. Did you know all of those southern plantation owners got reparations? 
Exactly. Yeah. 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 So the thing about it is, is so even the people you you freed the slaves from got paid for losing the slaves, but the slaves themselves or the descendants of the slaves themselves do not deserve to be compensated for the work that our ancestors did. That's right. Our ancestors, but, but, see but, you know what? Uh-huh. But let's be real. Let's be real. Hey, do you think? Do you think we're going to receive it? No. Hell no. But we should. Yeah, we should. They like, but like um, Grizzly said earlier, they they're trying to they're trying to change what uh, white kids learn, and it's all about these white kids. They're trying to, to to change what they learn in school because they don't want these white kids to understand the fucked up shit that their ancestors did to our ancestors. Mm-hmm. See, the thing about it is one of the reasons why critical race theory is important. It's one of the reasons why. We can't let them whitewash our history. This is one of the reasons why we should keep talking about getting reparations. We should That's right. keep talking about talking about what black history really is instead of the whitewash version they're trying to feed us. And see, that's so the true. problem. If we step back, if we if we if we take our foot off their neck and let them tell our story, before you know it, I there totally will agree. A, there will be a movie out. There will be a movie out in a couple of years. With Eminem playing Tupac, mark my goddamn words. Yeah, so, I totally agree. So, so we. But the, but, the thing, but the thing is, don't forget, Sean, that that's been happening all along. Absolutely. She's exactly. like, she was like, yeah, the yeah. pharaohs. They yeah. wasn't white. Yeah, but you know what's funny? Now, who's you, down to the cowboys? It was black cowboys, but we ain't know about black cowboys until we do. Do you know that true. there are Greek people now coming out trying to, to argue against black people, saying they clear that stop trying to take our history? Look, European, shut the fuck up. Uh-huh. Shut I mean, the fuck up. Y'all don't, uh, here's the thing we're talking about a region in the Middle East. We're talking about a region in the Middle East. Now, yes, there are lighter skin, light, lighter complected Middle Eastern people. Okay, let's 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 call it what it is. But these are still melanated people. So at the end of the day, you're trying to all you're always trying to take away and and, 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 and overtake the history, the history of, of our people. Yeah, and, 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 it's, and it's infuriating. It's infuriating. Yeah. And the problem is you are not willing to deal with the consequences of the actions that you took against our people early. You yep. did it. Yep. Nefertiti, this, 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 all that they try to portray as white. Exactly, well, they try to well. make all of the all of these people. Well, I mean, think about. Did anybody uh, uh, see see the um uh what is that one that came out uh, uh, the Egyptian gods, where um um what the hell was his name um mm-hmm. uh, shit um Gerard, Ger- um, um the one that uh, played Leonidas in the movie um the three hundred yeah. mm-hmm. Egyptian god oh Gerard Butler. Yeah, yeah. Gerard Butler. Yeah, yeah. Gerard Butler and the and the, I, I forget the other guy. I think he was from um um from he he was from um shit. I can't remember the name of that damn show. Uh, True Blood. He was a guy, one of the guys from True Blood. And but these were two oh. white men playing. Yeah, these were two white men playing Egyptian gods. This was recent. This was recent. Yeah. And the thing about it is, there are Egyptian people that are acting that could have played them parts. But you decided to go with two white men, so they still. But you know what? But you know what, Grizz? Like Broadwin said, this this shit ain't new. They were doing this shit back in the fifties and sixties. Yeah, and and Mickey Mickey Rudy, yeah, Mickey Rudy playing the fucking Indian. Exactly. And and he he a white boy. Even though I love him, Al Pacino is not Cuban. No. Yeah. He's Italian, right? Look, look, I do know one better. Charleston Heston. Yep. Yep. Well, I mean, The Rock played a white guy in Gridiron Game. Exactly. Do you remember (laughs) or do you know that the the Asian people are not from Asia? They are actually from Africa and they migrated. There is it's the Asian tribe. Yeah, called a son yeah. and they are definitely their whole facial features are dark and they look just like asians but just during the great migrations mm-hmm. during the great floods they yeah. were they went north and because I mean, they went north, 
They, if yeah, they look, level, yes, that's, they met, met, Nelson Mandela was from that tribe, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. And the whole idea is that they all resemble Asians. And, a, and if you know about the Great Migration, when the floods came, they went north, but it's colder north. And what's the first thing that goes when you get cold is your melanation. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so, so, the so they didn't come down to Africa. Africans went up there, and then that's where that came from. That's right. I even, so, had, I even had the conversation about, remember when the pharaoh, think about the pharaohs that used to be, that used to be worshipped over in Egypt. Those were mostly the albino folk. Right. Because the pharaoh, the people didn't see people of that color, so they thought they were gods. They thought they were mm -hmm. angelic because of their pigmentation. Well, right. they were just people that Africa, Africans did not accept in Africa because of the pigmentation. They were either hunted down for their for, for their bones and all of that type of stuff. So what happened was, mm -hmm. as they started to migrate further over, they were worshipped in, in, mm -hmm. in Egypt and places like that. And you got to think of where they came from. They came from Africa. They were treated horribly. They go to Egypt. The only thing that they know at this point is how to inflict pain. So this is one of the yep. reasons why things were so horrible in Egypt and all of these places. And then they migrate further over to when they're going over into Europe and going into Carpathian mm -hmm. Mountains and things of that nature. But they still have the mentality that they're superior because they right. came from, they just came from, from a place that worshipped them like gods. So now when they go to the Carpathian Mountains and over into Europe and England and places like that, they've already got the mentality in their minds mm -hmm. that they're better than darker skinned people. So when they come back around, the only thing that they know how to do is work on work, work with the wrath and the, the thought process of superiority that, that they were given by being worshipped like that in Egypt. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So the thing about it is, is in many ways, we, a, a lot of things that, that has happened are the consequences of the of, of the things that, that, that came before. You get what I'm saying? Right. So when, 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 when you make when you make like like think about right now, white people don't want black people mm -hmm. want, want their kids to 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 know how horrible they were or still are towards black people. So right. they're trying to hide every goddamn thing. Yeah. Well, history repeats itself in a circle. You know what I'm saying? Because the people the people that are white now were the Albano people that walked across the region that were kicked out of Africa. But like I said, once they got into the Middle East and places like that where they were worshipped, like they were gods, they already they, now they have a mentality of not only am I good enough, I am now superior to the people mm. and the tribes that I was just kicked out of. So when they come right. back around, slavery. These are the yep. things that happen. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like everything everything has a consequence and everything has a turn. The problem yeah. is complaining about the consequences that come from the actions that you took. You see, we had to pay for the actions that happened in Africa early. But then now white people have to pay for the actions that they took from bringing us from Africa to this country and, and, and treating us the way that they did. So now they are trying everything that they can to either hide it, whitewash it, or put a goddamn Band-Aid on it so that their kids won't feel or even turn. Because they, what they're afraid of is their kids is going to feel so bad they're going to turn the country over to us. Like well, it's, it's theirs anyway. They built it. That's the last thing that they want want that want to happen. So they're doing yep. everything in their power to make sure that their children do not that their children don't actually receive the proper education that they need, so that they don't turn out like them. Wait, yep. Shasha, you gonna say something? I'm sorry. I, I, I'm I I'm just going to. Um, um, what did Mr. He say right there? He said that um, the first motion picture for the first motion picture for the birth of a nation, which was about a black man awkwarding a little white girl. That mm -hmm. was played by a white man in black face. That, that, yep. set, that set the tone. Yep, that set the yep. tone. And, and, that was and, a, and you know, that was a, a silent movie. Yeah. Yep. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it actually got white people to be afraid of black people, when in right. actuality it should always be, have been the, the other way around. Yeah, because, because it was a black, it wasn't, it was a black faced white man who was taking sexual liberties with the white girl. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Because so, so who can, so who can always, play a black man better than a white man? So who yeah, always yeah. covers up their crime by calling out as a white guy, as a black guy? It's always a brother. Yep. It's always yep. a black man yep. that does the, the the evil, but 
you know, hey, yeah, when, when in actuality, the uh, first movie they ever made said it was a yeah. <laughs> said it was a white guy in blackface. Mm-hmm. In actuality, mm-hmm. let's just call it a band and keep it a bug. Most white women, if they get raped, are raped by white men because they're yeah. in the direct proximity of the white women. Right. So, 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 so for the most part, those are going to be because you commit crimes in the proximity of the area that you're in. Yeah, absolutely. I had that conversation with a with a with a bailiff last week because he was like black on black crime. I'm like, it's no such thing. It's no such thing it's as black crime. on black crime. And he was like, What do you yeah. mean? Because black people kill each other. I say, and white people kill each other. Chinese yeah, people kill each other. Mexican people crime. kill each other. I yeah, said, yeah. when 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 two when white one white person kill another white person on the news, do they say it's white on white crime? They say it's crime. It's no such thing as black on black crime. You kill in the vicinity of which you live. You kill the That's people right. in That's the right. community in which you live. So true. The guy said to me, well, "What about the bloods in the crypt? Well, what about the mafia? What about Chinese the mafia? Russian mafia? Italian mafia? Yeah. Come on, man! The Amish mafia. The Amish mafia. Yeah, the Amish exactly. Come on. Yeah. Uh-huh. What about the what yeah, about the absolutely. KKK? What about the KKK? Exactly. Yeah, so here's the thing: you want to talk about gangs? Guess who started this shit? Guess where we yep. learned how they yep. had the gang mentality from? Let's not yep. forget about the fact that 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 that, that, that the um uh, the Irish ones would, came over to this country starting gangs called the called, called skull buggery. Yep. Yeah. So they yeah. started this shit. We got the there's a whole movie called Gangs of New York. How many black mm-hmm. people were in that yep. goddamn movie? Yep. None. Yep. That movie was yep. good as shit too. I love it was good. <laughs> yeah. 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 You That's one of my favorites. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Daniel Day Lewis was a motherfucking genius in that movie. Yes, what he was. That, he but was straight honestly, up gangster. Yeah, but Ooh. honestly, we we have to understand that everything that the, the problem is, even crime, we do better. That's what the problem is. You see, you get they get, they get mad when we do crime, but we learn criminal behavior from you. Yeah, you are. They were, their, they were the original gangsters. You're right. You're right. You're the, you're the first teachers in this country. You taught us the shit that when, when yep. we we learned the drug trade from you because the first drug trade was not cocaine; it was opium. Mm-hmm. Yep. You were bringing opium from 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 the Middle East way before we did. Way before mm-hmm. we bought. First of all, let's 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 not forget there weren't many black people, if any, that owned any planes, trains, the automobiles at that time. We didn't own no goddamn boats. We didn't own any of that shit that would bring that pipeline to bring uh-huh. that shit over here. Yep. It was brought yep. to us by you. Then you want yep. to get mad at us for starting. It. First of all, we didn't start a cocaine epidemic. We couldn't even afford cocaine. That was for rich white folk. The only time we it could sure get was. cocaine was when we turned that shit into crack. That's right. That's right. Fried cocaine. Fried cocaine. Fried cocaine. Fried cocaine. See, that's the thing. But see, crack wasn't the problem for white people that hooked on that shit. Yeah, then it became yeah. an epidemic. You get what I'm saying? So that it's, it's, actually, it's, they've been the, the the thing about that is that the the um the rock cocaine was around way way longer than the 80s and 90s. It was actually they were basing in the 70s. Yeah, they was yep. using them. They, they were, were basing the in the 60s yeah. because if you yeah, yeah. if you followed the the Bumpy Johnson Godfather of Harlem. There were people yeah. rocking up back then. It just wasn't prevalent because people didn't have, like you said, access to cocaine as yeah. they do now. And that's because yeah. the American government had to let cocaine in so that they could make the FBI and so they could make the CIA work. Because all of their exactly. mo- most of their money was covert funds made from drug trafficking. Yep. Exactly. Yep. exactly. Yeah, and and then you, know what, you know what I think about it? black man to sell it and fill up the the, the 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 whole west side and then they turn uh-huh. them into a drunk. I hate this whole yeah. shit. But you know what you know what get me you know what get me you know what get me uh brother Rich being being me being police for twenty plus years, I cannot tell you how many brothers I locked up for possession of marijuana and now white people have marijuana stores. If that don't fuck me up. 
Well, black people do have them. They don't have them here yet, but there are black people who do have uh, marijuana stores in D.C. And they will be probably proprietoring here once uh, July turns around. So, but, 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 but my, it's but few my point and far is, between. It's right, few and but far my between. point is, white people are uh, got, they're the first one that got these marijuana stores. Yeah. I mean, they, they you can you can get liquid. You, I got I know I know of a woman in Atlanta that um, can send you and they fuse fucking cake. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm a, I'm a, I'm you a, can I'm get that right here in Baltimore. Baltimore. Really, it just it just amazes me. It just amazes me how many brothers' lives that were destroyed possessing a marijuana, and you got mother, you walk in a fucking store. And, and 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 get it in flavors. It uh, it just. But but you gotta that's remember the, that's what America does. That's what America does better than any other country in the world. They they take what you have an addiction for, and the yep. government controls it, and then they make it profitable. And once it's profitable, the government seizes it back and yep. lets it back out in their form. So that they did it with alcohol. They're doing it with marijuana. So, so that's what yeah. they're gonna do. And look at that cute baby. Yeah. Look at that cute, cute. Hey, hey, really? I actually, I actually, um, when I stole weed back in the day, he was a white where my shit from. And he was Say it again. Oh, pardon, pardon. It was, oh. Yes, I think she did give some attitude. Tell me, she just told me not yeah, to use that language. Yeah, she, she told me not to use that language. Yeah, she just told me not to use that language. I'm, I'm sorry, baby. I'm so sorry. <laughs> watch, watch your mouth when the lady's in the room, sir. <laughs> she was buying it from a white man. Yeah, I was buying it from a white guy. He was growing it. And so, so my thing about it is, 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 is we, even then, we weren't growing weed. We were purchasing it, purchasing it from somebody else. Yeah, and yep. we probably purchased it from somebody else who had a weed yep. weed farm somewhere that they were worrying about. They locking up like like beat base. You locking us up for having weed when the actual weed farmer is just finding the next black boy to use. Ain't that a bitch? Ain't that a bitch? Exactly. And the Ain't that a bitch? Part, guess what? They usually grew the weed in the middle of cornfields. Right, because because mm -hmm. of the smell of corn and because how high corn grows, it can grow higher than weed plants. So it was covered uh -huh. up. And what they would do is they would then harvest the weed first before they cut uh -huh. down the corn. Yeah, exactly. but what get me is yeah. and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't the weed smell good better back in the day? Oh yeah, hell yeah, it did. Yeah. Yeah. smell wonderful. It, it was natural. Some of the, some of the, well, the um, the strains that I've smelled lately that are coming out of the dispensaries are more back to the original sense. Like they they don't have any type of uh chemicals added to them because guess what? They're grown by the government, baby. Ain't that a bitch? They don't. Hey, want, hey, they they don't want the money. They don't want the money. They telling them you can't put your money in a bank because we'll seize it. But guess what? Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. regulating it and they making them go through all these hoops to mm -hmm. sell it, and they get yeah. the money from all the regulations. Yeah. That's hey, hey brother money. Rich. I I don't want to tell too much, but stay away from the gummies, bro. <laughs> Oh, shit, ain't no, shit ain't no joke. What, shit ain't no juice? joke. Rich, you, 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 want, you using blue chews again? I don't. Oh. I wasn't. I, I, I wasn't had, talking about. I, I wasn't had. talking about brother Rich. I don't had gummies, cupcakes, juices, chicken. I, chicken. <laughs> this is like, I had, I had a lot, bro. Yeah, they infused chicken. Yeah. Chicken, they can hey, yeah. Hey, Rich, I, I, I tried flour. a half a gummy. I tried a half a gummy. I'm going to stay in my lane, bro. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> my friend Sabrina gave me one, and we went to a swimming pool, and I didn't know it was a, it was a candy, like a Jolly Rancher, and I didn't know it was supposed to eat the whole thing. Yeah, and I bet you, I bet you it was done, right? Done, done. Right. Yeah. yeah. You just got to take that I, I, I think we had it. I think... I think for our first show back, I think we did a pretty good job. What y'all think, man? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Oh my God! I'm still in the top. Which one? 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 And seeing you guys again, the motherfucker wasn't that great. <laughs> well, yeah, this is the this is the one today that I'm wearing, and honestly, like this is right now. I've worn this two or three times now. So this is the uh, Club, Club de Nuit Intense Man. Junior, wake up. This is nice. What, what's what, it called? Club de Nuit. I'll I put it up right up in the, in the camera. Here you go, brother. Club of the Night. Yeah. Oh man! Oh, I got it! I got it! Well, remember your I, mic is I, okay. on. Yeah, remember you. <laughs> tell her her mic is on, or we can still hear her. <laughs> hey, and it's and it's very affordable too. You didn't looked it up already. Oh, hell yeah! Hell yeah! You know he's quick with it. Hey, That's I found it on said. Amazon for thirty three dollars, though. That's what she said. <laughs> No. You know, you know, you know, you know, I did say three minutes joint earlier. <laughs> hey, 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 let me, hey, 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 Grizz. Nothing What's against up, you, but I want to know what Lady Sha thinks of it. She walked okay. around. Making you see, walking around, around sniffing. She walked away from the table to smell. It. That's your table. So, lady, that, so lady Sha, tell, tell us what you th- what what are you what is your critique, dear? All right, so it is very very light, but it's. Floating at the same time, like I can see me sniffing on a neck, like ooh, or wherever the smell ooh. is. It's one of those you want to touch on and kind of smell. Ooh, say, what? Ooh. Mm-hmm. say what? Say what? Say what? You got a tingle? I think it would be more tingly if it was on them. Mm-hmm. I think it's I think it's worth my thirty three dollars. He's brought you by <laughs> one for each hand. Hey, 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 Rich. Yeah. Hey, Rich. Nice. Yeah, I love, I, I'm gonna I'm 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 put some of this shit on. I'm gonna put some of this shit on and take myself out. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, honestly, I felt like since I'm gonna be doing the, 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 the uh, podcast and the Teddy Files, instead of having to bring stuff out of the room and but I'll just have it all in one place. You know, I'll be running, I'll be having a whole handful of fragrance. I just have it here and I just reach on the shelf and just pull it down. And you need a random one. Yeah. Like if 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 Brown would want to say, sure, what is that one back there? But I would already know what this one smells like. That's one of one of the ones that's here. Right there. But uh, yeah. I like the set. I like it. I yeah, can smell so. stuff the whole time we talking if I want to. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Yeah, I think honestly, I think we had a pretty good show tonight. Um, I, I I don't want it to get too late because we're not in the same location. The lady Shaw has to drive home, so I want to make sure that uh, she's safe and um, our, our son's here with absolutely. us. So absolutely, so absolutely. Home as well. no but look, man, I think the show, tonight's show was a great show. I pre- I, I want to give applause to all of y'all. You know, for showing up and, and, and being patient with me as I, you know, went through the whole process of moving and building this and getting all of this back together. And the whole set looks completely and totally different. We even got fancy with the little microphone, lapel microphone and things like that. So we decided, you know, we, we did a little bit of upgrading and things of that nature. But look, man, I think tonight's show was good. I appreciate you guys. Um, we're not going to be too long on here tonight. So, uh, each person, just give me give me a synopsis of what you think about tonight's show. Uh, let's start with uh, let's start with Rich. Oh, because Rich ain't have a lot to say, man. We don't give Rich, we don't give Rich a lot. Hello, he think he think about that murder he got away with. I ain't getting away with no. I didn't do no murder. Murder was the case that they gave him. No. So, uh, Miss Brown, what do you think, what do you think about the night? Bro? I think it was good. Yeah, okay. I enjoyed myself. Good conversation. I'm glad to be back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You. I'm glad to yeah. come back online. What about you, but my man, base. What about you, brother? You know what? Is it me or is Lady Shot glowing more than ever? She's close. She to is because she got her own ring light now. I'm here to light. <laughs> Walk into it's the just that that that, that 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 the backdrop 
it just bring out her beauty more and more every day. Aww. I'm just, you know what? I miss y'all like, like, like crap. <laughs> I ain't had, you know I ain't had my crap. fix. I ain't had my fix in two weeks. I'm, I'm gonna say this to you, Shaw. Watch out for base. He's looking for his third ex-wife. I'm just telling you, just watch out for me. <laughs> no, because <laughs> hey, 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 because if it's ever Lady Shaw, she gonna be it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Child will be arrested for murder. Give your hands off. <laughs> and, 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 and bro, and bro, I'm being marched for the home with a smile on my face and say, "Why is that Negro smiling so hard?" You don't know what happened to get me out of here. <laughs> See all oh, my big teeth. Oh, I love tonight's show. I know how we just always start at one point and end up in a whole different direction. They always have. I love those conversations. It's all Grizzly's fault. It's, it's all good. Happy birthday to Rich. Oh, thank you. Happy birthday, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. it. Appreciate it. Yeah. Tw- Twenty what, bro? I wish. What? Uh, it's my Jesus year, man. Thirty three. I don't know why they keep saying that. I so had a that's whole your Jesus year. That about them. Yeah. Cause that's the year Jesus died. So I don't know why y'all be saying that's y'all Jesus. <laughs> That's the way you got to look at it. For me, it's the way he's, well, he died not. for our sins. Are you living like him? I'm trying to. Nope. I mean, he ain't, he ain't done with me yet. <laughs> he ain't done with me yet. <laughs> I know. Well, I'm, about, I'm the eternal asshole. I'm sorry. That's, you know, no, 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 no. That's what we love about you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, JB? How you feel about tonight's uh, uh, conversation? <laughs> Well, you know, first of all and foremost, I got to say thanks for allowing me to be on this format because I get a little smarter and hopefully I give you a little education too. I love it. You know, I'm one of your biggest supporters. We'll always be here as often as I can. And um, love, love the new set, man. Just don't let me near that wall because you will have some holes in it looking like missing teeth. <laughs> Yeah, I see. I can. I can see. Man, I can't invite none of y'all. Wow. Mm-hmm. I, I can't. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna wear my coat Bro. with the big pockets. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm come over there with my shopping bag. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to lock this damn door, boy. <laughs> Lady Shad, what about you? What do you think? I think a discount over here. <laughs> oh yo, got that cologne, yo. They got it on the wall. I probably should have just thought of a different set. Shit, y'all talking about stealing. <laughs> <Yeah. see it. laughs> hey, I'm going to put the box next, back, though. If y'all want to play, play. So if y'all want to play, I'm just going to tease y'all, man. That's okay. All right, you want to play? I'm going okay, to put the box right, back, though. <laughs> this is called... What you say, Rich? I'm going to put the box back. Yeah, he's going to have a bunch of empty boxes. That's right, that's right. You gonna fuck around to find out. Because <laughs> Rich gonna take good. the clone. Look, Rich gonna take the clone. I'm taking the shelves. This ain't only <laughs> fans, Bronwyn. Keep that camera up. <laughs> I said this ain't only fans. Keep that camera up. <laughs> I didn't even see that. You, you sure I was about to say, Drake. I was like, y'all don't know what cousin don't know. You're like, come on now. Yeah. We, we your little brothers. Come on, keep yeah. that camera up. Like, Let somebody make a rude remark. Let somebody make a rude remark in them comments. We're going to be JB. fighting. Them. Oh, yeah. You better not don't you know that people don't you know that people in south baltimore paying for that kind of show right now <laughs> exactly exactly be like go hey, to bro, my only fans this is the number one you want to get your nose on bonnie what, what, what's that what was that uh they, they, the the it was one meme. It said, "Why do men make?" It said, "Why do men make podcasts to talk about their feelings rather than talking to somebody?" Send me some samples, Sean. Of course. And it said, "Why do women make only fan pages instead of going out and get a real job?" <laughs> mm. 
I'm back. Okay. Wasn't ready for that. Wasn't ready. For that. This is nice. So it has like a um, a, like is it bourbon? Chestnut. 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 There's a nice. It's a thick. No, I don't know if that's the right it's word. It's a sweet. What it's did a sweet you just say? Whoa. <laughs> Smell. It's a smell. Stop it, smell. Rich. Wait a Stop minute. It, Rich. What did she just say? I know. Stop it, it Rich. <laughs> she said, Stop it, Rich. That's a thick nut. I don't say that. No. I know I heard what I heard. I was like, wait a minute. You said thick nut? You said thick nut. I did not. Yeah. And then I said, Chest nut. Chest nut. Y'all said thick nut. Y'all can hear what y'all want to hear. Y'all nasty. A thick ass chest nut. Hey, hey, Rich, Rich, because I heard chess and nuts. Hey, Rich, Rich, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is nice. This is really nice. Yes, that's what I'm saying. So, y'all want to play? I'm going to tease y'all. That is, y'all want to play talking about still. Don't be trying to steal nothing. Yeah, I'm watching you too. Yeah, man. Right. Hey, hey, Rich. <laughs> anyway, hey, Rich. Man. When, when is the house on? Ain't no. <laughs> the very first day in February. Hey Rich, I, I, I got it. some, I got some triple, triple pod trash bag, bro. <laughs> What's that address again? Well, I mean, I get, it, I, let, let me, I, what I'll do is this right here. Well, you oh, know what? The ones you had the other day. What, which one? Which one? Which one, one? of them new ones that you had. Oh my goodness, they was nice. That one right there, mm-hmm. the green. Uh, I don't know, I don't remember the name of it, but one of them was really, hey, Rich. really nice. That was that one you hey, said. He's going to mess around. He's going to have some nice decorated boxes. Oh, oh this? <laughs> you doing the one? I think this is one of the ones you're talking you about. You can put here. them like Mercedes Benz. Oh, like, yeah. Really like, you can put some work up in here. Oh, yeah. This is the. Yeah. Oh. This is one of them. This yeah. is one of the new ones you got. Have you smelled the Tom Ford pretty. Oud yet? Um, uh, which one? Oud what? I don't know. I, I I yeah. forgot which one it was, but I have it. This is nice. It, it, it that honestly, like I I've smelled oud wood and I've smelled um uh um what's the other one um ombre leather and things like that. I smell yeah I, I just smell some I, now I'm on it's my way to get it. Yeah, it's the oud wood. I have it. And, yeah. Yeah. Okay. It, 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 it was a beautiful present from my sister who always makes me smell good. She gave me that and Bur- Mr. Burberry in the same bag. Oh, woo. Oh, yeah. oh, Mr. Burberry is another good one. That's another good oh, yeah. One. I have a bottle of it upstairs. She didn't know, but guess what? Now I got one at work and one at home now. So I heard that. Hey, um, that- hey Grace. You know what? What's up, brother? Now, do you have your, 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 your best shit on one side of the wall and your cheeks on the other side of the wall? But me and Rich gonna no. want to know what to take. No. <laughs> oh, so <laughs> we just gonna take it all. So. All this shit. They had nothing. <laughs> huh? All, all this is toilet. All, look, all this is toilet, toilet water went in boxes. Exactly. Exactly. That's all it is. Hey, hey Rich. Hey, Rich. We just gonna, we just gonna take it all. <laughs> we gonna take it all. Bottles up there for him. I'm gonna go. Huh? I'm gonna go to. I'm gonna go to Alco. And get them ten dollar colognes and just switch them out the box. Out the- <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to do that. I'm gonna have to. Just, uh, I'm just gonna have to. That's put a good idea, the bro. That's a good idea. Just plus signs. We put the Ross <laughs> Ross ones up there. That's it. Y'all ain't getting nothing. Hey, 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 Rich. Hey, Rich. He just gonna have a whole bunch of the same <laughs> shit. Yeah, this is all them Ross <laughs> dressed <laughs> less ones. Instead of CK, it would be chicken too. <laughs> hey, JB. Hey, 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 hey J. He gonna have he gonna have a thousand boxes of Nino Cerruti. <laughs> Red's gonna be like, now Lady Shaw smell this. This smell like shit. <laughs> no, That's what it's called. That's what it's called. It's S C H I T T. It's a A J. It's a French clone. Yeah. yeah. S C H I T T A E Shite. 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 Oh my God. Anyway, y'all, we about to get up out of here, man. Look, I want to thank everybody for tuning in tonight. Appreciate y'all uh, coming back after the two and a half week hiatus that we have. Uh, once again, make sure you like, share, and subscribe because when I tell you that we're back, 
we are damn sure definitely back. So you might want to come back with us because these subjects is only going to get better. We only going to get brighter. And we only going to be talking about more deep and more mm-hmm. powerful shit. And not to mention, Lady Shaolin came up with a couple of different ideas that you do not want to miss. I oh, promise yes. you. So in the next couple of weeks, just be ready and be prepared. Once again, like, share, subscribe to the content. We are on YouTube. We are on Twitter. We may pop up, pop back up over on uh, Twitch if that jackass don't uh, come over here talking that bullshit again. That's the second time we've been over here. Yeah, come over here talking that dumb shit. But remember, you will not be disrespecting any of my panelists, any of my guests, because these people are my family. And trust me, I will bust ass for my family, so you don't want that. Amen. But anyway, once again, I love you and I appreciate you guys. And uh, if you like what we had to say, you already know, you know the spill, you know the deal. If you don't like what we had to say, you got a problem with what we had to say. And you got some shit that you want to say. Ms. Brown, we got something that she want to say to you, Ms. Bronnie. <laughs> Shut your mouth. Shut your black Shut ass your mouth. mouth. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.